My name is Blake Jensen, and I am a podcaster in the Indianapolis area. I'm producing a new series of audio files called Magic and Mayhem, where I'm going to talk about things important to me, and if you like it, you can simply comment below, or you can press the like button on your LinkedIn channel, or wherever else you'd like to share this information. Today we're talking about faith, and faith is our First Amendment right underneath the U.S. Constitution or the Bill of Rights. And mainly, we want to produce information for people to really understand and feel in a way that makes them really get who a person really can become is not about who their pastor thinks they might become. In truth, who a man becomes is what God leads him to do, or what she might lead him to do for those who prefer a female God in their minds. Many people produce lots of information on God, but I'm going to talk about the magic of God in my life. Sometimes it will seem silly, sometimes it will seem magical, other times you won't believe one word I say, but I promise you everything I'm going to say to you is absolutely 100% truth, and if you don't believe me, you can come and spend an afternoon with me, and I'll prove it to you energetically that there is a force outside of our visible realm that we can all tap into in a loving fashion. I learned this skill set from one person, someone I love very deeply, who showed me a gift that has not only protected my life, it has helped prevent other people from harming my life in some regards. I'm most grateful to her for that, but openly that's not the story right now. I'm talking to you about faith. What is your faith? How does faith play out in your life? When you have a faith, what does it mean to you? Not what does it mean to some pastor preaching from a pulpit or some temple leader talking from a pulpit stand in that sort of place. I don't really know the lexicon of the Jewish faith, and I certainly don't know much about mosques. But in truth, there's always a cleric. There's always someone who sort of knows a little bit more than others, and there's always wiser men called elders in a church. Sometimes they let women do the role too, which it's about damn time, don't you think, at this point in American history? But in reality, men seem to get the power in churches, which I find a little bit discrimination, but Openly, it's their right, I suppose, if they follow the Bible to the letter of the law. But what is the law today in regards to producing a faith-based religion? You see, many people look at religion like it's old school. Some people play it out completely to the, the letter of the law. They won't eat particular meats, they won't do particular things, and yet other people will. Now, who has the right to decide what faith is for them? You see, in my life, I have many people who think that my faith is not quite right for me. But in truth, it is perfect for me. It helps me, guides me, teaches me, gives me lessons in life, and openly, I can talk in a way that nobody else can. But in truth, that's my right. You see, I have the right to pursue religion. I have the right to, to read religious books because this is America, not some third world country or some dictatorship of sorts. But in truth, what I'm seeing happening in the community here is lots and lots more of faith-based publications coming into being. It used to be that freedom of religion and freedom of the press were completely separate and not equal in the same facility. Yes, of course, there are newsletters and news publications that are religious-based, and they have the right to do that. But when community business publications start to take on a faith-based bent, I really have to wonder who's owning those publications now, what is their goal and mindset, and why do they think they have the right to push their faith through their publication without letting people know there's been a shift of some sorts. Now, if there's been a shift in religious publications in the community and I was not around to see it, then that's on me. But if they don't regularly communicate that in their publication, I think that's a little misleading because people are expecting an unbiased, untainted view of what's going on in the community with both religious-based businesses as well as non-secular-based businesses. You see, in life, we need both in order to produce a healthy, wholesome sort of place for all God's children, regardless of what your stint is on God, your belief in a Holy Spirit, or even your interest in any type of angelic force that may or may not exist according to Catholicism or other religions around the globe. But in truth, most people know there is something greater than what we can see out there. And in truth, they were not just talking about aliens that might actually already be among us because we are so inept at technology that we cannot keep up with advanced civilizations across the world's cosmos, uh, cosmo, I'm going to lose my word here, cosmos, if you will. And again, I'm not an astrologist, so don't make it like I have to know every single word that's out there. But in reality, I'm talking about faith today. 
Faith is the lexicon in which we choose to study on our own. Faith is the liberation of our souls. Faith is the basis for which we have hope, love, and fidelity. And faith is also something that many people use to harm others. You see, faith is one of those words that most people see as a positive thing. Positive in terms of healing themselves in the hospital, positive in terms of their prayer life, positive in terms of many realms. But there are many, plenty of faith-based people who go way beyond their call of duty. What I mean by that is that they start to intrude on other people's rights. You see, the rights that we have today are based on the amendments in the Constitution, and most begin with that first amendment, which is the right to freedom of religion, which means we have the right to pursue any aspect of God we'd long to, to understand. If he or she, it, whatever you so choose to call God, decides to give us insight and wisdom into that area, that's on us to tell our own families, our own friends, our own social networks, if we so choose. Many other people are evangelical, and so they like to go out to street corners and tout the word of God and fire and brimstone and all sorts of interesting prophetic concepts. But in reality, they cannot produce one ounce of love for someone who has a different lifestyle than them, and they certainly don't show any respect to people in those categories. They absolutely think that they have the final tank on God's word in the universe, yet it says very clearly in the Bible that no man can possibly know the world and wisdom of God the Father in heaven. Now, the first chapter of the Bible also talks about that he made them male and female like himself, which means that there is a female side to God, which most Christian organizations totally dismiss. It's sort of why the women are repressed in most Christian-based organizations, and in truth, there's some reality for why that should be. Many women do not know how to interact with men anymore at all. That is absolutely something that I see proven almost every single day of my adult male life, and I'm almost 50 years old now. What I see is women thinking that they can shit all over a man, excuse the French, and be able to get away with it. They think they have the right to put a man in his place, to tell him he's low, to give him no room for any type of love in their soul, and in truth, they utilize his skill set, his mind, his wisdom, his insight, and then they throw him away to go pick up another one. Now, men and women are not different in this regard. Men are also known as predators of, of female company, and they sort of do little things like that on their own in their youthfulness sometimes if they didn't have a faith-based upbringing that has made them totally adherent to incredible principles of fidelity and other aspects of life. But in truth, we're not talking about fidelity, we're talking about faith. And in faith, there's many aspects of faith we must get to, but how do we do it? How do we talk on faith without people thinking that we're ill in our minds? How do we talk about God and his power in our life if we can't explain to someone how it feels to be physically folded in half by God in the heaven, who simply shut me in half, folded my body in half when I was longing to run to the woman that I madly love to tell her, I love you, I want to marry you right now, I will help you to raise your children to become godly men, and I want it all. Every aspect of your heart, mind, and soul. Forget your body because we'll grow old together, and who knows what our bodies are going to be like past a certain amount of aging processes in the cellular aspects of life in the human body. But in reality, God folded me in half and said, no, you may not go to her right now. Now, who's going to believe that story? My own family won't even believe that story, and it's absolutely 100% true. I was standing near a place that I went to frequently in my computer tech days. I often went there to do work online because the people there treated me with respect, dignity, allowed me to sit there all day, allowed me to buy food, eat food, use the internet without a problem. And I walked in past the one that I had not spoken to in a while, and I so longed to say something but all I got in my soul was, don't talk to her now. I immediately said out loud, that is not fair, God, and I walked in past her. I couldn't say a word. When I got into the restaurant, I nearly fell over with my grief of not being able to talk to her. And openly, I'm not telling you something you really want to hear exactly, but I am telling you how much in faith is important in a man's life. When I couldn't hold it in any longer, when I longed to run to go tell her, I love you, and I can't say her name right now because it would be giving away too much of my own secrets, that I literally was put in a path of something, some force greater than me, simply folding me over in half. 
Now, did she see me fall over in half because of my longing to see her or because of my ache and pain of not being able to talk to her like we once did? I'm not really sure if she did. All I know is that when I left the restaurant from my quick order out menu takeout, I found she was no longer there. That day has lived in my soul forever as maybe I did the wrong thing. Maybe I listened to the wrong guides. Maybe I really should have run to her and told her how I felt. Or maybe God was putting me on a different course in my life for life lessons, for training, for becoming more of a man than she could ever possibly dream of having in her life. But openly, I don't know. And that's what faith does for people. It gives us insight. It gives us ideas. But practically, many people use logic to talk themselves out of the way that God is speaking through them and to them in moments of kindness. You see, Moments in Time are my mini-series for my Blaze Communications LLC practice, but Magic and Mayhem is going to be all about faith, because my life has been moved totally, 100%, the past four to five years on my love of faith. And the only person I can thank for that love of faith is the only woman that I have loved like this in my soul. She showed me a tool that I cannot put down. It has given me guidance, it has sent me to hell and back, and it openly has provided me so many life lessons about spirituality, faith, growth, healing, and all sorts of other aspects of practicalness of living a human life that I can't possibly thank her enough. But does she know how much that meant to me? Does she get how much God has shown me her name in my soul for years now? You see, it long began before that. He gave me her name long ago, and I didn't realize it till later in life. And openly, that is truth, that her name has been in my soul forever. Not only forever, for the longest time, since my college days, perhaps, but in truth, even my most favorite of television shows has her last name in it. Now, what are the odds of that? I turn on a show like Jeopardy, and her initials are on the screen. How many people get promptings like this in their life is hard to say. But what do you do in times and moments when you have the opportunity to simply give kindness to someone else? That's the point of today's audio file today, kindness. Do you make a choice of kindness in a moment of time when someone is standing before you asking for help? Or do you openly logic yourself out of helping someone with an inkling you might get in your soul? Even if that inkling means you have to be inconvenienced in some way, shape, or form. Even if that inkling means that you have to lose some money to provide someone kindness. Many times people who provide kindness then later feel some sort of obligation from that individual that may not really be in that person's soul. I tested this theory the other day, but I'll talk more about that in another faith-based podcast. These are life lessons, I suppose, magic and mayhem, faith in our lives. This has been Blaze Communications, LLC. I'm Blake Ensign. If you like this sort of authentic talk, let me know. Thanks.